What up, bros? This is the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. We are a couple of aspiring filmmakers that love to watch and critique movies, but also enjoy a lot of bit of the nerd life. Oh, yeah. Um, this week on the podcast, we got a couple things in Adventures in Hunting. Um, in pop news, we got a new Aladdin line for the movie, yep. the live action movie. And some new Toy Story 4 ones that Rose knows about. Yeah. Right? Yes, sir. And then in Blu-rays, we just got one movie, Escape Room, which neither of us have seen, but we talked about earlier with the, or in this week's sneak peeks. Yeah. Might be a red box for me. I don't know. I've heard it's not that great. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we don't get any through the wall news because both of us are too afraid to go on social media. Yeah. With Avengers Endgame coming out tomorrow, today well, being Thursday. Tonight, technically. Tonight. Let's face it, it's okay. tonight. But we could not get tickets for it tonight just because they sold out like that. It was insane. Yeah. No shit. But, yeah. Yeah. So we're not going on social media because even though Thanos demands your silence, we don't trust people. I like I seriously deleted Facebook and YouTube, just the apps off my phone because I I don't trust myself. I'm not taking any chances, so. Yeah, tomorrow I might not even take my phone to work. I yeah, I don't think I'm going to pull out my phone at all at work tomorrow. Yeah, screw that. Yeah. Cuz if something gets spoiled for Endgame, I'm going to lose it. Yes, me too. Um, we don't got anything in this week's sneak peeks because, like I said, we're afraid to go on social media, and that's including YouTube. Yep. YouTube's actually the one oh, yeah. I'm avoiding, like, the plague. Yeah, me too. Because I know, like, my, like, one of the first things that pop, would pop up tomorrow morning and suggest it is, uh, you know, like, uh, post credit scene of, uh, Endgame or, um, this is how so-and-so dies, you know, all that shit. Yeah. yeah. Screw that. Yes. So... Yeah, so we're skipping straight to our main event, which is our breakdown of The Unicorn Store, a yeah. Netflix movie directed by Brie Larson. Yeah. Also starring. Yes. So, with that, let's say we get started. Let's do it. All right. First off, in Adventures in Hunting, we got a couple new pop lines. I actually took pictures of the, uh, like, this was the last thing that I saw on Facebook oh, okay. before I went total media blackout. <laughs> um, so the live action Aladdin line is, so we got um, just kind of Aladdin and his just normal regular clothes with abu yes yeah, i want that one actually that one looks pretty cool that one does look pretty cool then we got him or aladdin as prince ali that one looks really good yep then we got jasmine in her kind of animated movie accurate costume with the blue and oh the yeah headdress and everything yeah it's pretty cool it does um Nothing like too special about it. Uh, Jafar, which looks like Jafar. Yeah, it's really like know, just really imagine what a, like whatever you about. imagine Jafar looking like in real life from Bam. the animated. That's what he looks like. Yep, there he is. Uh, then we got two different genies, which. Blech. Yeah, I was kind of tempted to order the Amazon exclusive, but then I'm like, no, not going to do it, not going to do it. Yeah, so we just have normal genie, which has like the cloud underneath him, and he's it's just folding his hands. Yeah. Then there's an Amazon exclusive, which is just the genie, but it glows in the dark. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. It's eh. I, I mean, I I would hope that the glow is at least cool, but I I do not know. I bet the glow would actually be pretty badass yeah. for that. Unless they're doing something stupid and making just like that cloud glow. That'd be I'll so bet you dumb. money it probably is. Oh, probably. That that would just eh. 
<laughs> uh, then we got a couple other exclusives. We got the Funko Shop exclusive Jasmine, which is the Diamond Edition. Yeah, that one already went live, and um, it didn't even sell out. It moved to the Funko Shop. Ooh, yeah. that sucks. Which, it's a cool looking pop. It it is, yeah. but the the Diamond ones, I'm not a huge I, fan yeah, of. I've only bought one Diamond one in my whole pop life. I don't know how to say that. Um, uh, and the only one that I've gotten is the Diamond Edition Mickey. That's the only one I've gotten. Would you get like a Diamond Edition Mini? Yeah, they've already came up with came out with that, and I think I missed out on it. Oh, bummer. Yeah, I know. If I find her again in stores, I'll definitely pick her up. Yep. And then the last one that we got is the Hot Topic exclusive Jasmine in some sort of royal outfit. That one actually looks really cool in person because uh, if you flip it on the back, the uh, veil is actually see-through. Really? Yeah. It's pretty damn cool. That's interesting. Yeah. I wonder what costume that is. I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of scenes from the original that that, like, they would do with that. Yeah. Like, the only one that, like, comes to mind, like, because she didn't switch costumes at all during the No, she didn't. The only thing that comes to mind is when Jafar had her and she was in that weird skimpy outfit, the belly dancer outfit. Yeah, that's but really I don't, like I, I don't think that's it. I don't think so either. I guess we'll find out in May. Is that when this movie's coming out? May. Good question. I'm not googling it. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing I need. Considering they're both Disney, some spoilers have. I don't know. Knowing our luck, a spoiler is just going to pop up. Even though it's a completely different movie, they're owned by the same company. It's, it's some, A spoiler is going to pop up. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, And then the second line, I don't have pictures of these ones, yeah, but you so, know them? Yeah, I'm going to go off these like the top of my head, and some I do forget. Okay. So I apologize. Um, So the first one that we got is uh, the common Sheriff Woody, which I love how this one looks. It has him like with holding a lasso and everything. He actually looks better than the uh, recently released Woody that we got like like a year or two ago. So I can't wait to pick that one up. Um, and then we got uh, Buzz Lightyear, which I th- I want to say he's in like like a flying kind of pose. I think that's what he's in. Oh, isn't he on the stand where it looks like he's just coming down? No, that's so that's the Amazon exclusive. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, the common one is where like he's kind of like this, I think. Like in a flight kind of pose with his fist forward. Cool. So that, that, that looks pretty cool. Uh, it's definitely like better than the uh, other one that we got like one or two years ago. But that one's still really cool as well. Uh, and then we got uh, Jesse, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people are happy that they're doing another one of her. Because I think the only one of the, of the, 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 the only other one of her that's come out is the one that like came out when like Funko first was. Well, not Funko, but like Pops came out. Um, and I think that one goes upwards of like five to seven hundred dollars. Holy shit! <laughs> yeah. So and she looks great. Uh, and then we got the common Bo Peep, where uh, she has like a, I don't know what kind of toy is next to her, but um, yeah, it's her and another toy. Um, and then we got the alien, uh, which looks awesome. I love how the alien looks. He looks amazing. Um, and then we got um, Combat Carl Jr. That's going to be interesting. Combat Carl Jr.? Yeah. Remember that scene in Toy Story with Combat Carl? Never yeah. actually saw him. What? But it's like when uh, they're looking up at looking into Sid's yard, and they're like, oh, you know, like, what's he blowing up now? And Woody's like, oh, it's a Combat Carl. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of remember that scene. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is like, I think like kind of like an evil Knievel kind of toy. I, sorry, I'm horrible with names. Um, and then another one is that, uh, that creepy doll that was in that, uh, uh, that, uh, store that Woody goes into that Bo Peeps in. Oh, screw <laughs> that. Yeah. The one that's like, she, you're not leaving or something like <laughs> that. Uh, and then you got uh bunny and then you got duck or yeah, yeah. Bunny and ducky. Um, and then with exclusives, um, you have the Amazon exclusive uh, Buzz Lightyear that uh, Caleb mentioned, where he's kind of like, I want to say like kind of like coming down a landing pose. I don't, I don't know what. 
That just kind of has his hands on his hips. And yeah. Kind of like. But I want to say he's on a stand. He is on a stand. He is okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and then uh, the hot topic exclusive uh, is Woody holding Forky. Oh, and I forgot. Sorry, I forgot the common Forky, where he's smiling. Um, and then the GameStop exclusive Forky is where he's frowning. Um, really original with these, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> real, you I'm got real kidding. Cur- kidding. We can tell you try real hard on these names, Disney. Yeah. With Bunny and Ducky and, and Forky. I'm just really hoping I like these new characters. Um, and then what? What else did we got? Oh, uh, we got a, a flocked Bunny and Ducky. Uh, the flocked bunny went to Target, which I actually picked up a couple days ago. Really, really awesome. Although it was very hard to actually find a good flocked one, just because the way that his neck and his body are, like it looks like his head's like literally about to fall off with how they did the flocked on him. Um, but what's really cool is like he has like a hook on the top of his head to like really, it really shows that like he's kind of like a carnival toy. Um, but Ducky doesn't have that, but that's because Ducky's attached to Bunny. Okay. So it it makes sense. Um and so the uh flocked uh ducky is exclusive to FYE. So I feel obligated to get that now since I have the flocked bunny. Um and then the only other exclusive I can think of is the uh Barnes and Noble uh exclusive uh Bo Peep, where she's kinda like in her action pose with her hook. Yeah, that one looked really cool. Yeah, I kinda wanna get that one. I like that one better than the common one. Yeah, the common one's kind of lame. Yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's quite a big line. So much money. That is a huge line. Yeah. And I th- think you remember them all. Yeah. Good on you. Thank you. I'm very surprised I was able to do that. <laughs> I just couldn't remember the names. That's 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 what really um ruined this. Or tripped me Well, up. we that's got like most of the main ones. Yeah. Or at least the big names. Yeah. Um, moving on to Blu-rays. Uh, the only Blu-ray that I could find that was that was coming out this week was Escape Room, and like you said, apparently it's not. It yeah. Didn't do well. No, I don't think so. I'll still give it a watch though, just because I like these kind of movies. But um, I actually remember three other ones that came out today. They weren't like they're not like new movies. They're just like new versions of movies, right? Um, so I think, th- I think the Alien Quadrilogy came out on 4K and Steelbook. Um, I want to say it's all of them, or it might be just one. I can't remember, but Steelbook looks really cool. Um, and then both Captain America: The Winter Soldier and Civil War got released in 4K on Tuesday, uh, and their Steelbooks got released as well. Um, and I'm so tempted to get that Winter Soldier one. So tempted. I don't need the uh, Civil War one, even though it's in 4K. I actually like the original one that they came out with, just because I think it's like cool how it was like Cap Shield and then Iron Man's mask, and then it was like a huge like split between them. Yeah, I think it looked way cooler than just like because they just put the poster on that steel book. So I think that's kind of plain, but whatever. It, it's still a cool looking steel book, um, but. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having the Winter Soldier in steel in a 4K steelbook form, considering that's one of the best MCU movies ever made. Yeah, as officially designated by the Elbros. Yeah, that that is very true. But that might change when Endgame. So might, might I think when, when Endgame it. comes out, like after our breakdown of it, yeah, we need to do a re-ranking. Yeah, just yeah. with the top three, okay. because we also have to include Captain Marvel. Oh yeah. Uh, was Ant Man and the Wasp in that? I mix? can't remember actually. Yeah, I was just gonna ask that. Let me check here, because I'm pretty sure Ant Man and the Wasp was in the in the list. Okay. You threw it away, didn't you? Nope. Oh. I keep everything, boy. Oh, that is Stanley cameos. <laughs> you suck. Just kidding. Iron Man, Cap. Black Panther, Ant Man, Doctor Strange. Nope, we do not have oh, Ant Man and the Wasp. Well, bam, we got three more movies to add to it. Yep, we got Ant Man and the Wasp to add, Infinity War, Captain Marvel, and Wait. Endgame. We didn't add Infinity War? 
This was before Infinity War. Really? Pretty sure. Oh, shit. Okay, then yeah, we definitely gotta do it then. Yeah. Should should that be next week's episode? Or not next week. Oh, no, not next week. Okay, (laughs) sorry. Okay, shut up. Um... The week, a- so not this coming week, but the week after, after we review Avengers Endgame. Um, I don't see why not. Okay, bam. Heard it here first, folks. If we don't do that, then Caleb's a freaking liar. What? You can't put that all on me. <laughs> yeah, I can, and I just did. You're an asshole. And your point is, this is news to you? <laughs> Alright, whatever. Um... Anything else to add in Adventures in Hunting besides those? Um, the only thing I can add is Walmart really needs to um, have a definitive um, standard when it comes to shipping. Don't have two different types of shipping. I got a story behind this really quickly. So I was able to get the uh, Walmart exclusive Ronin and Rocket. Um, Rocket came pristine condition. That's because they packaged him in the new way that they do it now. Ronin came crushed to hell just because they did it in the old way they did it. And, yeah, thankfully a guy off the uh, Utah Funko page is hooking me up uh, with another one. But, yeah, it was pretty. Like, I, I literally drove to, like, almost I, – yeah, I drove to every Walmart in Utah County trying to find another Ronin on a Monday night. But, oh, geez, <laughs> to no success. You can give him a shout-out, I'm pretty sure, that we can't get in trouble for that if you want. Okay, let me find his name. You don't know his name? No, because it's, it's not Roberto. It's his friend. Oh. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Brayden Burningham. So thank you, Brayden. Appreciate it. Yeah, we're meeting up uh, Tuesday night in Lehigh. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that covers Adventures in Hunting. Like we said, we don't have any through-the-wall news or this week's sneak peeks because we have blacklisted... Facebook yeah. and YouTube. So uh, if you if we missed a trailer, come back next week and we'll definitely talk about it. Yeah, I haven't. So the only thing that like I had to make a like a a shortcut key on my phone for like our Facebook page, and that's the only thing that I've been on Facebook doing. Okay. Everything else, I'm just like, nope. Caleb's a lot better at this than I am because I've. So I've watched one review for Avengers Endgame. I watched the IGN review. I know. Bad. I know. I know. I know. I know. Hey, at least I didn't tell you what they said. I will kill you. I know you will. They didn't spoil anything, but still, I'm not going to say anything. And I checked out the Rotten Tomatoes score and the consensus. I don't think that counts. It counts a little bit. (sighs) Fine. Double standard over here. Ugh. Yeah, so with that, I say we skip right to our main event of the evening. Let's do it. Okay, that's got to be a new record. Yeah, that's a record. Okay, all right. It's time! Time for the main event. Let's play game. Okay, for our main event of the evening, we are going to do a breakdown of Netflix's original movie, the unicorn store okay is it the unicorn store or unicorn store the unicorn oh it is the unicorn store okay that's the name of the movie okay are you sure because i thought it was i'm like 100 percent certain because i posted a okay so if it's just unicorn store do i get to slap you in the face no (laughs) ha (laughs) (laughs) okay maybe it is unicorn store (laughs) uh Is that picture blurry? Because it was for me. Yes, it is a little bit blurry. What the hell, man? You're supposed to have high-def shit. I tried. (laughs) Uh, I don't see you doing anything on our Facebook page. Well, yeah, okay. I gave you admin rights. You have no excuse. (laughs) Yeah, I don't. I was actually going to bring that up, but then I'm like, yeah, no, I can't. Okay, fine. I'll start posting then. Good. I'll post some, like, stupid shit, though. Fine. Okay. <laughs> I don't care. As long as you share it, too. Okay. Deal. We shook on it. It's official. Damn. Yep, we did. Death grip over here. <laughs> well, I was like at a weird angle. I didn't uh, want to hit my mic, uh, but I ended up hitting it anyway. But you also hit your organic seaweed chips. They're seaweed snacks. Oh, seaweed snacks. <laughs> it's like gold, man. 
Okay. <laughs> well, if you guys are new to our breakdown system, uh, we have split our movies into various categories, and we grade each of them individually to come to a final overall movie grade. Um, so the uh, the categories that we split the movie into are story, uh, writing, which it was previously theme, yep. but we changed it back in Shazam, or back at Shazam, because we thought that the theme and the story were basically the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, we also did acting, or is another category, character development, which we only we limit to the main people that actually had like a story arc, which I think is maybe one or two in this movie. All I can really count is two. Two? Yeah. Okay, then we'll only do the two. Okay. Uh, then we also grade the music of the movie. We grade any effects, which that one's going to be a little tough, but I think there were some. There were. There some. were. Yeah, there were. Um, then we're going to grade costumes, and we decided the genre of this is a dramatic coming-of-age movie, which I know coming-of-age isn't really a genre, but it's the best we could come up with, because none of the other things that we had were quite filling in what this movie was. And then we're going to grade it as a coming-of-age movie. And then after that, that's when it comes to our final grade. So, with that being said, I say we cut right into it. What do you say? Let's do it. Okay, so first off with... Oh, crap. What'd you do now? No, we we, we usually do a synopsis. I'm not okay. Uh, yeah, we're not. We're not going to <laughs> wait. Wait, no, no. Let's like let's come well, up with our own little synopsis. Well, no, uh, there's probably a synopsis on Netflix. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> that works. I didn't think about that. You're witnessing firsthand how afraid we are of social media. Yeah, and the internet. Okay, wait. I gotta actually find it. Yeah, sorry, um, we didn't prepare for this. Yeah, well, we didn't think about it until just now. That's true. Okay, when I type in the uni- unicorn story, the second th- besides the movie, the second one that comes up is Friends. Okay. Friends. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, the. Okay, here it is. After failing out of art school and taking a humdrum office job, a whimsical painter gets a chance to fulfill her lifelong dream of adopting a unicorn. That that's really short, sweet, and to the point. <laughs> damn right, that is. <laughs> like damn. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Okay, so starting off with story, uh, the story follows this, like it says, this woman. Do you remember her name? Kit. Okay. Just just wondering. Don't even. <laughs> I mean, you could call her Brie. I don't really, I wouldn't really care. Yeah, so it follows Kit, played by Brie Larson, who, like it said, fails out of uh, art school yeah. in the most epic way possible. That was, like, awesome. And then he's just like marking poor performance i'm like you dick (laughs) you're an asshole yeah so i guess they were supposed to be doing self-portraits oh yeah yeah that's what that was what it was and she did like this whole like she painted the entire freaking wall yeah because everyone else had like this little mural yeah yeah, everyone else had this like tiny little canvas, and she took up the entire freaking wall mm-hmm. and painted like the most amazing looking unicorn. And then kind of like up, yeah, up in like the right hand corner is like a beautiful unicorn. I loved it. Yeah, it's awesome. And then the rest of the wall was just covered in random paint and glitter, which is it was literally like a rainbow. Yeah, like, it was freaking awesome. It was. But I think that set up the story really well. It really did. I was like. Okay, this is going to be an interesting watch, but I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. Um, So it shows her going home because she gets kicked out of this school. Mm -hmm. And she is basically just sitting around doing whatever the hell she 
does, like eating snacks on the couch until her parents start to get on her case about not being in school or not doing school, not working or anything else like that, not pursuing something. And then she kind of gets fed up, finds this temp agency that puts her in a job making copies. I love the way the lady explains it too. She's like, do you know what a magazine is? Yes. Do you know how to copy something? Well, yes. Can you press copy before you put the magazine in? Yes. Well, then you're going to do great here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would be so hard on the soul. I know, right? Like, ugh. Yeah. Like, that just seemed like a soul-crushing job. Yeah. But I think it let... So, it's like an ad agency, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Where they come up with ads for different stuff and come up with different ideas for marketing Mm -hmm. different or things yeah um yeah so while she's dealing with this she gets invited to the store and she goes to this store and is greeted by the salesman who is played by samuel l jackson let me just say a lot of people i don't a lot of guys can't pull off a pink suit, but he pulls it off tremendously. Yeah, and those weird tassels. Yeah, like, I don't think there's anything that Samuel L. Jackson can't pull off. There's not a damn thing that he can't pull off. Yeah, like, man's a legend when it comes to clothing. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, So, anyway, she gets invited in and is told that she needs to... or. She asks, like, anything in the world that you could want, and she says that she wants a unicorn. Because didn't she say, like, ever since she was a kid, that's the one thing she always wanted for her birthday? Yeah. Okay. But her parents were always telling her, oh, unicorns aren't real. Well, and and they they got her a fake unicorn, but, you know, it wasn't the same. Yeah. Like a toy. Yeah. And so he says, hey, we got a unicorn in stock for you, like, just for you, and you... But, like, you need to f- fulfill these requirements before we can give you your unicorn. Mm-hmm. And, like, we need to know you're legit. Yep. And so it's basically all of these, like, self-help things. Yeah. So there was there was three, right? Yeah. So, so there was... The build a, a stable home for the unicorn. Yep. Uh, the second one was financially steady and... Um, Actually, there was... Four. Oh, there was four? Oh, I thought there was three. So there was the the home, like it needs somewhere to stay. Yeah. Then the feeding. Yep. So the food. Then it needed financial stability. Or wasn't the financial stability first? No, I want to say, wasn't the food and financial stability like mixed in together? Or was that, or was financial stability mixed in with the, um, like loving connection with the people you love it might have been that one okay i th- i thought i thought maybe it was on its own but i want to say those two were mixed i might be wrong <laughs> i don't know i'm, pr- I'm I-, I think you're right damn i, I should have watched been... this movie twice <laughs> my bad when did you watch it last night last night yeah yeah me too and i i've seen it twice and i i don't i was so focused on the message <laughs> <laughs> that I didn't yeah, even pay attention fair. to the damn like these no, little that's details. Fair. That's fair. So yeah, we're gonna say that those two things were combined, and then the last one was like the loving home. Yeah, and all that like the loving environment, and then at the end, like after she's done all this improvement, she go like actually gets to meet her unicorn, and. She like spoiler alert. Gosh, we need to do that at the beginning. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> We're so freaking bad. Um. So yeah, spoiler alert. At the end, she gets her unicorn, or gets to see her unicorn named Steve. Yep. And ends up not taking him because her life's kind of just gotten she, better in some yeah she's, just, she's where it wants it to be and like where she always wanted to be yeah and i think this was great because she was she's not in a good position with her job anymore no. so yeah, like that's fired. a little yeah so. so that's a little like 
funky. Yeah, but but she is in a better place mentally. Yes, way, yeah. And she understands that someone else needs the unicorn more than her. Yeah, that was like a sweet moment. I'm like, damn, are you gonna almost make me cry here, unicorn store? Because this is really sweet. Dude, it almost got me. I mean, I mean, it, it like shows you how emotional. good of an actress Brie Larson is. Yeah, totally. And we are going to get into that. Yeah. How did you think the story worked? I feel, considering how out there it kind of is, um, I think I think it flowed actually pretty well. Um, I did too. There was wasn't really a lot of like slow spots. I got bored in. Like I was entertained throughout the whole thing. Yeah, it was really well paced. Um, everyone in this movie made it fun. Yeah, like okay. it could. Like we had a hard time with the genre deciding whether it was a comedy or a drama. Yeah, but because it wasn't actively trying to be funny, mm -hmm. we decided it was more of a drama. Yeah, and then with the sh subgenre, we had a hard time <laughs> deciding if it was the like a dramatic comedy yeah. but it still kind of wasn't it was more like we said a more coming of age yeah movie. so we broke the rules just a little bit we added yeah. our own genre yeah but i mean because many people would do many people would consider that a genre honestly considering how many yeah considering how many of those movies there are yeah <laughs> um yeah, like you said i have like very little issues with the story everything flowed well Pacing was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like there was no slow parts. Even the second go round, like usually, like that's when you notice the slow bits. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, it, like when you start stop paying attention. I was still completely invested in this movie. Uh, what are you thinking for grade? Like a ninety. A ninety. Yeah. Ooh, 90. I was thinking ninety five. So what? Why? Why ninety? Yeah, you know, actually, yeah. More thinking about it, it does deserve that ninety-five. It does. Like, yeah. so it wasn't a perfect story. No, it wasn't. And I doubt there's going to be anything that has a perfect story. That's a very good point. Yeah. So, but it was damn close. It, yeah. Yeah. Ninety-five. I would completely agree. Okay. 95. Moving on to writing. This was... Actually, I do have some issues with the writing. Okay. And this is with the CEO lady. That So, in the story, she... Or there's this woman... So, there's a CEO of this vacuum company, and she wants an ad for this vacuum these guys come in and show their presentation for a vacuum ad, and all it has is just some hot chick pushing a vacuum. While holding her child. Yeah, while holding her child. Yep. And this this CEO lady, like who you think should be freaking professional, or she is professional, but she also makes a lot of weird comments yeah talking about like oh this ad makes me think that i can look that hot vacuuming my house and like you're a ceo shouldn't your husband be doing that <laughs> yeah like if Bra like no jokes if braille was making like ceo money i would be the stay-at-home dad <laughs> doing like all the chores at home and that in that outfit as well yeah, in that outfit if she <laughs> asked me to. <laughs> yeah, if she better having send the me a picture if that happens. <laughs> yeah, if Brielle was my sugar mama, <laughs> you're damn right I'd wear I gotta whatever. I got to see a picture of you in a crock top now. <laughs> oh, it'll be a cold day in hell. It's I mean, it, like I said, unless Brielle becomes We're only 23. We got a long life ahead of us. I think it will happen. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. That is... So that part... And some of the writing with her boss, Gary. 
Yeah, that was just kind of weird. Yeah, like I thought he was like 100% on our side. That, yeah, that's but what I he, thought too. He seemed kind of like like her a little bit, like a little bit special. Yeah. And then as it progressed, he went back to being like a normal boss. Mm-hmm. And I didn't care for that. Like I was honestly hoping like when uh, he was like, oh, I want to hear more. Like when Brie, uh, Kit is giving her speech, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. He's like, about the hot mom. Vacuuming, I'm like, you asshole. I actually flipped off the TV when he said that. <laughs> Dude, I did too. It's like, you dick. Yeah. I Like, I watched, the first time I watched it with Brielle, I was just like, you asshole. <laughs> um, so for that, I'm going to dock the writing a little bit. I am too. I mean, yeah, the one lady says like, oh, you know, you're nothing special. He does it to all the newbies. Um, but at the same time, like, yeah, it seemed like he was different a little bit. So like, maybe that was in a way like kind of good writing, like making you think he was, but he still was doing the same ways. Yeah. But with the character they set up at the beginning and the the character that they ended with very different people. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to agree. Like he was super into her, like the, the out there kind of stuff, or it seemed like that at the beginning. Yeah. And then it just. He wasn't into it suddenly. It just felt like out of nowhere. Yeah, I, I completely agree. So, um, I'm thinking like 80. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it was good, but it it could have been improved upon. Okay, moving on to acting. We have Brie Larson as the main character who played Kit. Um, Brie Larson is obviously from Captain Marvel. Yep. We have, mm, bloody hell. I'd butcher that Mam-mo- too. So. Mamawadu, Athi. That's a cool name. It is a really cool name. If I knew how to pronounce it, Mamawadu. Yeah, m- yeah. I, I, I'm not even gonna try because I'm gonna feel. I feel bad when I butcher someone's name like really badly. I do too. <laughs> <laughs> so he played Virgil. Um, he w- I don't know anything else that this guy has been in, but he I, did really good. Yeah, I hope he's in more stuff. Yeah. Uh, Joan Cusack played Gladys, Kit's mother, and most people would know her from voicing Jesse in Toy Story. Mm-hmm. And she was also in School of Rock. Oh, I loved her as the principal. In that movie. Yeah. Yeah. She- that movie's freaking great. I, yeah, I love that movie. Um, we got the salesman played by Samuel L. Jackson, Mr. Frozone himself. Damn right. <laughs> Gary played by Hamish Linklater, which he's most well known for being in Fantastic Four. At least for me. Okay, wait. I'm trying to remember who. The original Fantastic Four. Okay, who did he play? Uh. Uh, balls. <laughs> I think he was one of the board members. Yeah, that doesn't help me at all. With that Doctor Doom freaking roasted. It still doesn't help me. I'll have to watch Fantastic Four again to see yeah. him. And then lastly, we got Bradley Whitford, who played Gene, um, Kit's father. And he is... Well known for being in Get Out and Saving Mr. Banks. Yeah. All right. So first off, Brie Larson. She was fantastic. She was so freaking good. I loved her in this. Dude, she, her, like, it almost made me a little bummed out about Captain Marvel. In a way, because of how much personality she got to show in this. Yeah, I agree. And I was like, what? Oh, we could have gotten more of that. Yeah. I, I completely agree. And I honestly do not think that that is her fault. No, it's I not. I think that was just her writing. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a movie. writing thing. It's not a, an actress portraying the part thing. Yeah, but she put so much... Like, I loved her. Oh, I did too. I... I don't have any problems with her. In this I don't side. have any issues with like, her either. I loved her in this. Like she didn't have like any weird scenes. Nope. She pulled off being like just this quirky, 
woman who was just going to do what she wanted to do yeah. so well. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved how just, like, <sighs> bubbly yeah. she felt. I loved how at the end she was not afraid to show who she really was. I'd love yeah, that. Bri- <laughs> Brielle, she was talking about, like, the end of the movie, too, when she was walking in those pajamas. She's just like, those look super comfy, and I would totally walk around in those. <laughs> They did. They did look very comfortable. They totally did. Yeah, I I'm trying to think of anything off the top of my head that I had issues with, but I cannot come up with a single thing. I'm now thinking Brie Larson should come out with her own PJ line with those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like everything she did was awesome. Like yeah. the way she painted, the way that she was just quirky about everything, like putting up like a roof or. On the uh, stall, I guess you could call it. Yeah, that's literally what it was. Yeah, like that thing that they built. Yeah. Stable. <laughs> the s- stable, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had zero yeah. issues with her. Are, are you thinking 100? I'm thinking a solid 100. Yeah, me too. A well-deserved 100. Agreed. Uh, moving on to Mamodu Athi. Who played Virgil? Uh, I think I thought he was good. He was. Um, there were some some things that were a little off with his performance. Not little, like anything major. No, and I I think like was this his first role? The first one that I'm familiar with. Okay. This is the first time I've seen him. I haven't seen anything else that he's been. Is in. Is he in a lot? Not a whole lot. So I'm. I don't know. I think like. Because, yeah, I would agree, like, maybe he's, like, a little bit different in some parts of his acting, but I feel that's just because he's still trying to get his feet wet in the acting um, career, so. But, I mean, overall, I really didn't have a really, really a lot of problems with his acting. Overall, I think he did a good job for being the second main character. Yeah. I'm thinking 90. Yeah, that's what I would think, too. (laughs) Um, moving on to Joan Cusack, who played Gladys, or her Kit's mother. For the little that we saw of her, she did great. She did do really well, and especially that um that a uh, mother daughter moment that they had at the uh the that was a real heartwarming table. moment. That that was great. That was really great. It was nice seeing them make up after a uh, Joan Cusack kind of blew up on her and said like, "Well, we're, I'm sorry that we're not the parents that you wanted." Yeah, just was like, damn. I feel like most parents have a conversation of the, with their kid like that. Most of people, yeah. Like, I I don't think I've had any I, conversation like that with my I, parents. I never had that with my parents either. Maybe uh, it's just us. <laughs> I mean, there's some other people I can think of that I don't think they've ever had that talk with their parents, but. Mm. Maybe it's a Hollywood thing. It honestly could be. Yeah. I don't want to give her like a really, like I wanted like a 95. Because there were some parts where she was just kind of like, it seemed like she was digging in at Kit. Yeah. And that felt a little out of place. It did. Because I mean, like at the beginning, like, you know, they want their daughter to, have a job, but they still want her to do what she wants to do. And yeah, like when they like, they were thinking more of like as a hobby. Yeah. that's true. And I told Braille during this, that I would, if I would want be 100% okay. If one day, like that my daughter was going through the same thing, I would be 100% okay. Just taking care of her until she found out what she wanted to do. And then I, I would that. just back my daughter up, yeah, to the earth's end. I respect that. Yeah, because I don't want my daughter to be stuck doing something she doesn't want to do. Yeah, like if she ends up being the type of woman that wants to be a a mom, a stay at home mom, hundred percent behind that. Mm-hmm. If she wants to be a a CEO, like I'm one hundred percent behind that. I'm just going to be 100% behind her no matter what she decides to do. And until, if she has a situation like this, I want her to be, stay home. Like, if she's like, 
I want to pursue this, but I can't afford to make this switch right now. I'm going to be like, come home and you don't have to pay for shit. All you have to do is work on this. I respect that. Going to be an amazing father. (laughs) I sure hope so. (laughs) I'm really worried about that. He got this, man. He will. Yeah. So what are you thinking with her grade? Did you say 95? I said 95. I would agree. Okay, moving on to Samuel L. Jackson's. I loved him. I did this. too. He great. did really good. He really did. I especially loved the scene. Oh, I can't remember like what Kit says, but it's like when he calls her and says her unicorn is on the way. Um, and she's like, oh, you know, like, how does he get here? And, you know, like all this stuff and yada, yada. And he's like, oh, well, you know, like they got, you know, I got to make sure that this, the 809 is covered or something like that. And she's like, what, what, what's an 809? What does that matter? He's like, you ever tried to get a unicorn into the United States without an 809? Like, world would go crazy or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he was one of the, him and Bray Larson were the highlights of this movie. They really were. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I feel when how... they're together, they're, like, the highlights of any movie. Like, they, they were are. the best parts of Captain Marvel. Yeah, for sure. And I, f- I really liked how Samuel Jackson seems to, like, steal the show a little bit in sh- movies that he's in. Yeah. I like, he was the, one of the best parts of the prequels for Star Wars. Oh, hands down. He was the best part of Pulp Fiction. Yes. And... Like I said, he's one of the highlights of this movie, but he didn't play such a huge role, and I really liked that. I yeah, I did too. Like I liked how they didn't overuse him just for the sake of using him. Yes, everything about his like his role felt very natural. Yes, I completely agree. What are you thinking? I also want to say ninety five as well. Yeah, I do too. Like, I think the only one that can get, like, a hundred score is the main character. Yeah. Or main characters. Yes. If there is in that situation, but there's not so much in this one. No, there's not. Like, with people with a smaller role, I think everyone kind of gets a 95 if they did perfect with a small role. Agreed. All right. The la- uh, not the last one. Hamish Linklater, who played Gary, like I said, he felt very inconsistent as a character. He, yeah, he did. What What do you think of his acting? Because I felt it felt off at some places. I mean, he did a little. I mean, like I think like he kind of like played the uh, kind of like uh, office. I don't know, like the boss that's kind of like I hate being here, but it pays well kind of good i think he did a good job but i mean he like honestly he's probably my least favorite character of the whole movie he was mine too Mm -hmm. like i didn't like his acting so much in the boardroom meeting like he felt like very serious when they established him as someone that wasn't yeah and he was kind of playing the serious card a little hard and would, yeah, that was agree. more than a writing issue. Yeah, I felt. I I would agree. I think like maybe like eighty, seventy five. I'm thinking like seventy five. Yeah, I he, he. I don't know. He, his even at the beginning, I felt he was like kind of like a creeper at first. Oh, he straight up was. Yeah, and then they're like, "Oh, what's your role here?" and he's like, "Oh, I'm the vice president." I'm like, "Bullshit." Yeah. No vice president's like, "I hate this job to some to a, a temp." Yeah, that's very true. Like no. Yeah. <laughs> like no one that hates their job is going to make it to like VP or president. I feel Unless you're just committed to hating your life. I mean, if there's a steady paycheck in it, you'd a, be surprised a steady paycheck people... can go so far. Yeah, that's a good point. At least for me. Maybe, like, I'm the crazy one here. Yeah, dude, I think you are. I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Thanks, asshole. You're welcome. Yeah, 75 for him. 
And then lastly, we are going to grade Bradley Whitford, who played Kit's father. Um, I don't know, with him, because I feel, I don't know, do you feel it was about the exact same as Joan Cusack's role? I would say so. Yeah. Because he did a great job. He really did. Yeah. So, I mean, I honestly wish that we could have seen more from him and Joan Cusack, because they're both great actors. Like, honestly, I would give him the same score as Joan Cusack. 95? Yeah. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So, that covers all the people that we're going to talk about in acting, and that brings our acting score to 91. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Okay, moving on to character development. I think the only one that we can talk about really is Kit and maybe Virgil. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. Um, so, Kit. Like, her arc was amazing to watch. It, it was. Like, wa- just watching the, the progression that she was making with each of these things, because she was so dedicated on getting this unicorn to mm-hmm. her home. It was awesome. Yeah. Like, I loved how she just kind of... Especially when it came to like the her presentation on the vacuum, just how much she accepted herself because mm-hmm. she put everything away, yeah, in the beginning, and then at the end she's just like pull it all out, yeah, like and freaking rock her clothes, and she totally did. I've never seen so much confetti in my life. Holy shit! So much confetti! Like damn, dude. <laughs> I was laughing my ass off at that scene because of the dude that was drinking a coffee with his lid off. Oh yeah, <laughs> glitter, right? Or yeah. there was it was glitter, right? Yeah, it was glitter, glitter well, and confetti, but yeah. all in his coffee. I don't drink coffee, but that would piss me off. Yeah. <laughs> if it was Dr Pepper, you'd feel my wrath. Yeah, I thought she had like a a good variety of little progressions that she made. I would agree. What do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I like I literally have like nothing wrong with her character development. Like there were like some angles like I didn't think that she was going to take, but it, it kind of just like showed like how she thought that once she got this unicorn that like everything was going to fall into place. Mm-hmm. That this would just make her life absolutely perfect. Yeah. Um, but then it turns out she is the one that has to, you know, she actually has to put the effort towards and, um, yeah, no, I, I don't know, Brie Larson did a great job with when it came to her character kit. Yeah, she did really good. Um, I liked how it was the whole, like, little things yes. that built up to her becoming like a better person. I completely agree. And the one that she was struggling with like really hard was with the the family and the loving mm-hmm. home life. But she was so focused on it being like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to love this thing no matter what. But it was her relationship with her mom and dad that was the issue. Well, that was what was holding her back. And she did what she felt she needed to to improve that. Yeah. And sometimes fighting with your parents is the only way to fix your relationship. That's true. That's very true. Like, it's kind of a whole tear it down and build it back up thing. Exactly. And I felt that was really smart of her. I mean, I don't think Kit did that on purpose. I, no. I think Brie Larson yeah. did. <laughs> I feel, I know, it made the relationship more grounded and actual, like, genuine. Yeah. Definitely. And I think they chose the perfect parents to Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So what are you thinking with uh, great on her character development? Like a 95? Thinking 95? And what do you think? I was thinking about the same thing, too. Hell yeah. Like, everything Brie Larson did was just perfect. It, it really was. It really was. Like, it's almost sickening <laughs> <laughs> how perfect she did. In yeah, this. I agree. Uh, what do you think with Virgil? Oh no, I liked how like you know like at first like he thinks that she's kind of just this like weird girl that just like needs him help, needs his help with like a home improvement thing. But then he actually like actually like kind 
I thought it was sweet that like, you know, like he actually like started to fall for her and um like that scene, especially when she shows him the store and she's just like, Well, you know, you don't have to worry about me, you can just drop me and he's like, No, I'm the one who decides who I drop in my life and it's not you. I right? felt like he had a pretty good He did arc with, like how he was the kind of the screw up dude that he, that the guy on the main floor sends yeah. to the crazy people to. Yeah, he's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, but you know what? Go talk to Virgil. I think he'll be able to help you out with exactly what you want. Yeah, and Virgil's just like, just the janitor. Yeah, thing, he's just like, he's, he hates me. then he actually becomes me, competent. So, yeah. Like, he even makes YouTube assistant videos. manager at another store. Yeah, That's because awesome. of all the stuff that he learned helping her. Yeah. Like, she helped improve his life at just as much as she improved her own. Yep. And I felt that was great. Mm-hmm. And then he improved hers by being her love. Yep. It was so sweet. I think his was good. Not as great as Kit's, though. No, it wasn't. But, I mean, he was kind of more... He was still, like, a mainish character. He was more like a side character. Yeah. So, uh, I'm thinking, like... I can't decide between 85 or 90... What are you thinking? Are you thinking lower? No. Oh. Not lower. I was thinking like 85 too. Let's go with 85 then. 85? Yeah. Okay. So that brings that to a 90 in character development overall. Very nice. All right. Music. There wasn't anything that stood out music wise. No, there really wasn't. Like, like if was, you told me there wasn't a soundtrack to this movie, I I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. So it wasn't like an amazing soundtrack. No. It wasn't bad either. No, it wasn't. Everything kind of just fit into place. It was very average. Yes. I'm thinking like eight for like a very average. And then if it was like any worse, I would probably would have given it like a seven. Yeah, I would agree. So, eight? Yes. Okay. All right, effects. The only thing I can think of is the unicorn, but they literally just plastered a horn on the... Well, I feel the I effects assume. could also include lighting. Because I okay. really liked how when she pulled back the curtain, that the was rainbow awesome. effect. That was awesome. That was... Yeah, that's true. That was really cool. That was way cool. The way they had the whole like um, room set up where you meet your unicorn, that was really cool. Very yeah. well thought out. Yeah. And, yeah, there wasn't any, like, crazy special effects, but no. there was quite a bit of practical. Yes. And I think definitely the rainbow thing when she pulled back the curtain to meet Steve <laughs> was a really cool effect. And a pretty name. And the unicorn looked badass, too. It did. That looked amazing. What are you thinking? Because it wasn't, like, outstanding. No. But it wasn't bad either like an 85 i was thinking more like 80 80, okay yeah just because the lack of effects yeah but what was there was eh, i'll give you 85 okay (laughs) talked yourself up i did talk myself up (laughs) that was pretty funny oh shit uh costumes i three larsons were definitely out there dude they were Uh, cool they were though i think so Everyone else had very typical, like what you would expect from normal people, like clothes. Yeah. So the only ones that I think had like costumes was definitely Brie Larson and Samuel L. Jackson. And Samuel L. Jackson looked really good. I want some of his suits. Just saying. Yeah, some some of his suits were pretty cool. Yeah. But Brie Larson had probably the most variety of costumes yeah she really did because i liked her her painter's outfit the overalls yeah that was cool the basic hat and everything Mm -hmm. i thought that fit really well with Mm -hmm. who kit was one that actually stands out a lot is the one from the presentation oh yeah that was that was great i loved that so much i want one Dude, I, I really love the slow mo, like when they were at the bottom, and I was just like, "Yes, yeah, that, was, that was great." <laughs> like, uh, what are you thinking? Like, I don't know, like a nine, or is that too high? 
I was actually thinking nine too. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like that. Like the, there's nothing wrong with any of the costumes. I I completely agree. Okay, last we're gonna talk about the genre grade, which is more of a coming of age drama. And um, so, how do you think if it worked? Overall, I think it really worked well. Um, I, I liked seeing Kit's progression of how like she feels like she doesn't want to be a disappointment to her parents. She wants to do what they want. Um, like she feels like it's time to put away childhood things, but at the same time, she's like, "That's not me. I want to be able to still do what I want to do." Um, so seeing her progression throughout the movie was really, really good, and I feel that's definitely um huge testimony to how great of an actress brie larson is Mm -hmm. um so i don't know overall i think it pulled off his draw the the genre very well yeah 100 percent. i think this just goes to show that you can have a coming of age story no matter like not just with teens yes you can have it with any age Mm -hmm. and yeah, like you said, I loved how she had the whole, like, oh, I'm putting this side of my life away, and then just kind of grew into, like, her, who she really is, and it just learned to accept that. Yeah. And this is a movie that I'm definitely going to show my kids when they're older. That's good. Let's just hope Netflix is around then. I'm sure, I, I'm sure they'll release it on Blu-ray or DVD. Or Disney's going to buy it. Because <laughs> by then, Disney's just going to own the world. Dude, no kidding. Like, seriously. Can you imagine if they bought out Warner Brothers and they owned the DC characters? I know it won't happen. I have happen. thoughts about that. I, ho- I hope that they don't. I do, too. I feel they have, like, every ability to. Yeah. But I hope they don't, because Warner Brothers is kind of the only competition left for Disney. And if you kind of buy out your competition, yeah, you kind of have you kind of lose your edge. That's true. Yeah, Universal doesn't really give them a lot of competition anymore. Or yeah, or Sony. <laughs> I don't even think Sony's been in the picture for quite a while. Sony's like the side bitch right now. Yeah. <laughs> The only one that I wish was like a worthy opponent or like brought in a lot more money from Sony was uh, Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, that's one movie I wish would have made so much more money than it did. Yeah, so I I hope they leave Warner Brothers alone just like, so they have a little yeah. bit of competition. It's like you already have Marvel and Star Wars; you literally have the world. Yeah, like you bought out Fox. Fox was your only real like hardcore competitor now yeah. the only one that's left is warner brothers yeah just leave them alone yeah right it's like and you get to use spider-man you know sony's sharing him with you so i think you're good disney yeah anyway back on topic yeah <laughs> genre grade i'm thinking like 95 yeah i would agree 95 95 yeah okay well that completes this breakdown of unicorn store and the final grade that we got for this movie is a b plus very well deserved it's definitely different than what uh rotten tomatoes has it at what's that rotten tomatoes have it's in it in the 60s what yeah bullshit <laughs> whatever it's had like a 61 or a 62 so it's barely fresh that's so dumb. It's... I, I would agree. After watching it, I'm like, it, it deserves higher. It does. And I think B plus is really fair. Like yeah. I would almost want like my personal grade is like an A minus, but I'm happy with a B plus. I, mine's a B plus. B plus. Yeah, that's my personal grade as well. You know what? Well, screw you. Well, <laughs> I'll have different opinions. Okay, we can't all have the same opinions as Caleb Albers. Okay. Nope. The world would be a lot better if they did. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Oh, oh shit, shit, that's funny. Yeah. This world would go to hell if that was the case. Probably. <laughs> well, I think that wraps up our breakdown of I think it does Unicorn too. Store. And that, really good movie. It is. Definitely check it out if you guys are interested in it yeah if you like coming of age movies you're definitely gonna like this movie yes 
And completely agree. Like we said, Brie Larson just kind of makes the movie. She mm-hmm. throws so much personality into Kit. Yeah. Was this her first directing gig? I want to say yes. Okay. Because I think she does have a future behind the uh, camera. Oh, for sure. This. The only thing she needs to work on is her extras. Yes. Little, yeah, she needs to work on her extras and maybe a little bit of character writing. But other than that, I think I see a bright future. Yeah. Ahead her character her. writing for the main one is on point. Yeah, but it's the secondary characters that needs a little bit yeah, more she work. She stumbles a little bit. Yeah, but, but other than and then extras just kind of are like, oh, they need to say stuff too, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, f- amazing movie. Definitely going to be watching it again. I completely agree. Um. So yeah. Well. If you guys liked this episode and want to listen to more in the future or in the past or whatever, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. I'm considering taking us off SoundCloud because SoundCloud doesn't work that well if you don't pay for a premium account. Okay, yeah. Like you can only upload three hours of stuff and I'm and I have to go in and manually delete it. So I'm considering uh, getting off SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, dude. If it's for the best, do it. I mean, yeah. It's up I'll, to you. I'll think about it more. Yeah. Uh, we're also on iHeartRadio, Radio Public, and Spotify. Uh, you can also check out our content on YouTube. Uh, new videos are going to be heading your way soon-ish. Yeah. I say soon-ish because we haven't worked on anything yet. We need to get on that. I know. We suck. <laughs> or more so, I suck. Let's, <laughs> let's face it. Yeah, YouTube was supposed to be your domain. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When your laptop takes a shit on you. It... Yeah, it kind of uh, does put a damper on things, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you want to follow us uh, on social media, uh, we're on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash the Albros, or we're on Twitter at the all bros um i've been a little bit more active on twitter with the really? yeah i've Atta followed boy. a bit more podcasts and oh, okay been interacting with them a little bit Atta boy more. like I, i've been I, interacting with fortress of nerditude garbage and gold even though they took a shit on our favorite superheroes yeah i'm kind of uh, offended a little bit <laughs> yeah i'm a little bit okay i'm bitter towards them right now uh <sighs> But I'm still going to listen because their show's freaking great. <laughs> you suck at, like, opposing something. You're just I like, know. you know what? I hate it, but I'm still going to listen to it. <laughs> well, I don't hate their show. I just didn't like that they picked Hulk and Hawkeye for garbage. Yeah, that's freaking bullshit. <laughs> but, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, if you have something you want us to discuss in the next episode... Or you have a movie that we should see or an idea for like a Dreamcast that we can come up with. Basically, if you have an idea for an episode. Yeah. just Or if you just want to say hi. Yeah. Email us. Yeah, message us on any of the social media. You can email us at channel at gmail.com. No punctuation there. Or you can fill out a form that we have set up on our website, which is tinyurl.com forward slash the albros. So, yeah, we hope to hear from you guys at all. Yeah, please. Because <laughs> we asked, our question of the week was, uh, what's your creative outlet? And we got nothing. And Victor, I know you saw it. <laughs> I was actually just going to point that out. <laughs> like, come on, Vic, come on. Yeah, we're calling you out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah uh you know i'm just gonna make a new facebook account and comment on <laughs> on everything just be like yo dude you guys are the best, best podcast ever please don't i know i'm not <laughs> i'd feel like such an asshole if i did that we uh, should make christian do it we should <laughs> he doesn't comment on yeah. shit either come on christian send us some shit send us some questions yeah do anything dude please I, I almost want to challenge people <laughs> to be like, send me anything 
and I will like to see if I will read it <laughs> on the show and not delete it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I don't. I don't delete anything in our editing. Like I get rid of some of like the really long silences, but that's it. Oh. So so if someone said you made you say the f word, you you would say it. Okay, I wouldn't say the f word, but anything <laughs> else is free game. Anything. The c word too. Yeah. What? I, I hate t- that word. I know you hate that oh, word, dude. But... I'd I would much rather have the f word come out of my mouth than that word. Eh. Okay, we're if on. I was reading. I would definitely be like, this is from this person. <laughs> this person told me to say this. Yeah, this is where they live. If you want to get angry at someone, get angry at them. Yeah. And, like, I'd share all their social media stuff, but then <laughs> I, I seriously not opposed to reading, like, anything. Damn. Just well, as long right. as we get shit. <laughs> yeah, right? Um... All right, well, catch us next week where we're going to be breaking down Avengers Endgame. The big one. Hell to the yes. I remember I, you used to get, well, no, it was leading up to Avengers uh, Age of Ultron. You kept getting mad at me because I kept sending you that. I'm just like, uh, you ready for the big one? And you're like, Rose, if you call Avengers Age of Ultron that one more damn time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now your new thing is whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like. Gosh, shut up. Okay, in like the Funko community, that actually makes sense. Like when it comes to a certain pop, come on, whatever it takes. Fair enough. Yeah, so look forward to that uh, next week or next Monday because we're releasing on Mondays now. Oh, yeah. Because reasons. So, yeah, until then, this has been the All Bros Podcast. I'm Caleb. And I'm Jonathan. And we'll catch you guys next week. This is show long. I think that was like my worst. <laughs> that was actually really good. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought that was like one of my worst ones. <laughs> That's actually pretty solid. Hell yes.